name? Robbie Krieger, age 22 years old. Occupation? Uh, guitar. Name? John Densmore, age 23. Occupation? Percussionist. Name? Raymond Daniel Manzarek, age born 212-39. Occupation? Musician, organist. Name? Uh, Jim. Occupation? Jim Morrison is the oldest son of a decorated Navy officer. At 16, she's already reading Nietzsche, Rimbaud, and William Blake. He's also obsessed with Elvis Presley. One teacher sends home a note scolding him as self-centered. He goes to three colleges before attending the film school at UCLA. One of his friends there is Ray Manzarek, who's also playing keyboards in his brother's surf band, Rick and the Raven. Ray started with classical piano, but quickly turned on to jazz and Chicago blues. Jim, too, had an affinity for the blues. They shared a common interest in cinema. They were also dropping acid several times a month. Jim makes one film at UCLA. It earns him a D. He skips his graduation and tells Ray he's moving to New York City. But a few months later, Ray runs into Jim at the beach in Venice. He's been living on someone's roof and writing songs for a rock concert he hears in his head. Ray asks him to sing one. Jim hesitates. Then he sings, Moonlight Drive. Let's swim to the moon. Uh -huh. Let's climb through the Ray is impressed by the poetry of his lyrics. They decide to start a band. Jim's already chosen a name from a poem by William Blake. If the doors of perception were cleansed, everything would appear to man as it is. Infinite. Jim moves in with Ray and his girlfriend, Dorothy Fujikawa. Ray invites someone from his meditation class to come jam with him. John Densmore brings his friend, Robbie Krieger. Jim loves his bottleneck slide so much, he wants to use it on every song. Robbie and John like his lyrics more than his voice, but something about their lead singer pulls them in. In the summer of 1965, the doors are born. Jim had never sung before. Robbie had only been playing electric guitar for six months. His original training was on acoustic, Spanish flamenco. He played in one rock band with Densmore when they were both in high school. John had morphed from a high school marching band to a certified jazz freak into Coltrane and Mingus. Ray rents a house, and the band rehearses there all summer. Jim says they need more songs and tells everyone to write one over the weekend. Only Robbie does his homework. The first song he writes is called Light My Fire.
Troubadours get their first gig at a dive in L.A. called the London Fall. Still unsure of himself, Jim turns his back to the audience, facing the band like he does in rehearsal. The talent booker for the Whiskey A Go-Go comes in one night. She falls for Morrison and convinces her boss to hire the Doors as the Whiskey's house band. In late 1966, they're opening for the Turtles, Buffalo Springfield, and Van Morrison. Word spreads, especially about the lead singer. Jack Holzman, founder of Elektra Records, is so impressed, he offers them a three-album deal. The next night, Jim doesn't show up at the whiskey. John and Ray head over to the motel he's crashing at and find him out of his mind on acid. When they get him back to the whiskey, Jim wants to play The End, a song he wrote about breaking up with his high school girlfriend. The killer awoke before dawn. He put his boots on. He took a face from the ancient gallery and he you walked on down the hallway, baby. Came to a door, and he looked inside. No one in the band knows where he's going. Father, Yes, son. I want to kill you. Mother, I want to. His owner calls Jim a sick bastard and fires them. A few weeks later, the Doors record their first album in five days. Holzman brings in veteran producer Paul Rothschild. The equipment he uses is state of the art, a four track recorder. He lays down John's drums on one track. Ray's organ and Robbie's guitar take up the second. The third goes to Jim's vocal, leaving the fourth for all overdubs. Light My Fire and The End are over seven minutes long. Both are recorded in two takes. At Jim's insistence, all songs are credited simply to the doors. To promote the album, Holzman buys a billboard on the Sunset Strip. No one has done this before. Freak On Through is their first single. It stalls at number 106. Holzman shifts quickly to light my fire. Rothschild cuts the instrumentals, and the song hits the AM airwaves. In July of 1967, the first song Robbie Krieger ever wrote climbs to number one in the country. <laughs> 